Good to go. Good. There we go. Good morning, everyone. And thank you all so much uh, for being here this Sunday morning. I appreciate the chance uh, to be with you um, and uh, celebrate with you another week uh, that's gone by uh, as we move closer and closer uh, to the end of July and into August and uh, the upcoming school year and, and all of that good stuff. Thank you for all of you that are here with us uh, from your homes, wherever you may be joining us from, maybe at the lake celebrating a birthday party. Thank you so much uh, for taking some time uh, to be with us. I want to share just a few announcements with you this morning, and one of them has to do with our, our upcoming outing uh, on August 2nd. Carl uh, Barkett, who is our um, recreation chair on the church council, isn't able to be here with us today. They were on a recent trip uh, to Canada and had done some travel, came back, tested positive for COVID, uh, felt uh, that it was best not to be here. And so Larry Lewis, um, a good friend of his, uh, will be taking care of some of the registrations. And if you registered, uh, we'll start collecting monies uh, for the, the tickets and things uh, that go into this upcoming event. So see Larry Lewis out in the foyer uh, today. Larry, did Carl say that we could still take registrations, or is that? Okay. Till Wednesday. Perfect. Our uh, semi-annual meeting uh, will be uh, coming up following worship on August 11th. Uh, we encourage uh, people to attend, have your voice heard, all of those types of things. A couple things you're going to hear at that meeting uh, include uh, information on the mental health initiative, and some of the things that that uh, group has been working on, and some of the events that they have tentatively planned. Uh, we have to have our grant submitted in September, at least the rough draft. And so we have a number of, of things that, that we've been working on we'll be happy to share with you. The cemetery board uh, will share with you uh, some of their, their news and things like that. Uh, the solar uh, committee uh, will be uh, presenting information. They're actually meeting tonight uh, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to set up some informational meetings for all of you to hear and be able to ask any questions you may have concerning the work that they've done to this point, and then present to you as a congregation uh, the next steps that you would like them to take. If you have any information for the semi-annual meeting that needs to be turned into the office, you could get that turned in uh, by Tuesday of next week. Uh, that would be wonderful. Ruth's out of the office this week. She'll be back next week, but if you have some things and that you can get into the office, uh, we would greatly, greatly appreciate that. Furthermore, if you have any questions about anything that uh, we might be uh, working toward on any of those items, please feel free uh, to uh, share with me or, or anyone else uh, those questions. A couple prayer concerns I want to mention this morning. I want to mention uh, David Schmitz, uh, who is at Heart to Heart Hospice. Uh, we'd like to remember him uh, and his family in our prayers, and Jim Draghi, uh, Carol Joe's husband, who traditionally would sit right over here in this area, uh, remains at West River. Uh, he will be making a transfer uh, this week uh, from his normal room to the legacy unit uh, at, at, at West River. And we all know, <clears throat> as, as things move in a direction that um, sometimes feel more challenging than others. Um, we surround people with our support. And so in whatever way that we can continue to be supportive of any of these families, uh, we would appreciate um, that support as well. With that being said, Carol Jo is going to share with us uh, some wonderful music this morning. So in the midst of everything that you or Jim are moving through together, music uh, continues to be something that helps heal your soul. And through your talents, you help heal ours as well. Carol Jo.
I would invite you to join with me in prayer this morning. Would you please stand if you choose, but please join me. Before we sing, we offer these words as a foundation to our worship this morning. Reconciling God, proclaim peace to us once more. Put to death all hostility within us and help us be one with our enemies that we may all be members of your household. Remove the animosities to which we cling and be our shepherd, even when we are the sheep of your pasture. Through Jesus Christ, our guide and guardian. Amen. Good job. Please be seated. Children, I invite you to come on up if you'd like. Come on down and join us from wherever you may be seated. I'm going to need some help today with these right here. You want to do one? All right. You want to do one too? All right. I need two more. I need one more helper. There we go. Good job. We're good. See me next week. We'll get you taken care of. Good morning. Tell me about, how you doing, big girl? Give me a five. Good job. You want to sit up there with everybody else? Where would you like to sit? Find yourself a special spot. Wherever you'd like. You going to sit on the stair? All right, get your, get your big lugs out of the way there. Let her sit down, big man. Good job. Good job. Thank you for being gentlemen. Thank you. You can sit right there, too. How did everyone's week go this week? Good. What was the best thing about your week? Tell me. You got baptized at camp, and what day was it? I think I saw some photos of it, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Thursday it was. Thursday I got some photos of you in the water and everybody gathered around that pool. Congratulations. How did it feel? Felt. And what? And you got your daddy with you today? Uh, today's Sunday. Sunday. Today's Sunday, that's right. Yes, ma'am.
What concert are they seeing? Do you going to a George Strait concert? All right. Yes. So what was the best thing about your week? <sighs> Got to see your cousins, your your grandmas, and all the neighbors. Yes. What was what about what about your week? Oh, they're on their way home from George Strait concert. Yeah, you think when they get home they'll be they have a lot of energy or will they be tired? <laughs> so it was it, it, Yeah. So it was a good show, right? Yeah. I hope not. I hope not. Are you going to be happy to see him? Yes. yes. Tell me about it. You caught a hawk. Saw one. Okay, good. I was going to say if you caught one, you're in. How'd you do? Ah, you did it. We, we played the wiffle ball tournament. That's plenty. That's plenty. Yes, Brian? Today's Sunday. Today's Sunday. Today's Sunday. Yes, that's right. And your mommy too, right? Let me ask you another question. Last week I asked you about favorite movies, right? Remember that if you were here? Yeah. Today I want to ask you about another favorite of yours. What's your favorite food? What's your favorite food? Cucumbers. I think you're lying. What's your favorite food? Chicken. Your favorite food. I'm easy. Cantaloupe and peaches, favorite food? Um, most, of all of them. Mostly all of them. Put it on my plate, I'll eat it. What you got? Uh, noodles. noodles. What's your favorite food? Yes. Mac and, Mac and cheese, favorite food? Uh, chicken, nuggets. chicken nuggets. Any kind of fries, favorite food? Um, grits. What? Grits? Grits? Yes, grapes. grapes. Grapes, okay. That's a little bit better choice, although grits isn't too bad. Get it sugared up a little bit. There's, there's a story in the Bible in which Jesus is gathered with a whole bunch of people. Um, they were trying to have some peace, like your, when your mom and dad get home from this concert, they're going to want to lay down and they're going to want to... You what? You want to have some grapes too? Yeah, someday. I, I don't know if your dad bought, brought grapes or not. If not, just ask around. Somebody might have some grapes. Um, that, and, and they wanted to just kind of take it easy. But there were a bunch of people showed up and wanted Jesus to do some miraculous things, which he did. And then after it was all over, they decided they were something that has to do with food. I can't remember the word. Um, when you want food, you're feeling what? I can't remember. What is it? What do, what, do, what do you think? They were feeling hungry. Exactly right. So they were feeling hungry, and Jesus said, we're going to feed them. However, there were a whole bunch of people, and they were all hungry. And all that they could find were two things, and it wasn't cucumbers, it wasn't peaches, it wasn't mac and cheese, it wasn't grapes, it wasn't french fries. They only had two things for everybody gathered there. What do you think those two things were that they had? Um, milk and eggs, okay. Maybe milk and bread. What do you think they had? Coconuts? So just a bunch of, they, they found a bunch of coconuts? They might have had coconuts. What do you think they had? Bread and wine? They might have had some bread and wine. What do you think they had? Bread and wine? What do you think they had? Watermelon and cantaloupe. Those would have been all great things. They had one of those things. What do you think they had, Brian? Bread and wine. Fish and what? 
You said it already. What do you think? No fish and cantaloupe. No, what do you think? No, no fish and milk. What do you think? Yes. Fish and shrimp? No, no, no fish and shrimp. What do you think? They Bread and grape juice? No, but you said the, one of the right things, fish and what? What do you think? Fish and bread. Fish and bread. All they had was fish and bread. And there were a lot of people, and they only had a little bit of fish and bread. But Jesus said, I think we can make this work. Have you ever had a situation or a moment in your life where you didn't know if something was going to work out quite right, or if you, you sat down at the dinner table and you're like, this doesn't look like enough food, I maybe want a little bit more than is here? They didn't think they were going to be able to feed everybody but a miraculous thing happened. They all got something. And how do you think all those people got something to eat with only a little bit? How did that happen? What do you think? So they were going to do what, essentially? Where they were, yes, they were sharing. That's, that's what you were saying. So if you're not eating all the fish, it goes to more people. If you're not eating all the bread, it goes to more people. And they shared. An important part of making things happen well and an important part of making things go really, really well is when we're able to work together and share. For example, if you go down there and you were going to get some candy when we're done here in a second, and there were only six or seven little pieces of candy down there for you, but there were all of you here, how would you handle that situation? Somebody might do what? I don't need one today. I'll eat half of this one, then you can have my other half. You would share. You'd find a way to share. And then the congregation would probably make sure you had enough for the next week, and they would provide that for you. They would share something with you so you had something when you were done here. Importance of sharing and working together is essential. A big part of your baptism has to do with being baptized into a ministry, into a life that calls you to do just that. You're going to take care of yourself, which is really, really important, because if you don't take care of yourself first, you can't help other people, right? But you have chosen to be a part of something like Jesus was doing, and that's helping others, and I'm really, really proud of you, and I'm proud of all of you for all the things that you do. Thank you for helping share some of your talents and taking this offering today as well. If um, where's, where's the fourth one right there? Okay, if you two could be on this side, and you two will be on that side of the church when we do the offering. Yes? Yep, go together. Go together. You can share in the load. Let's pray together before we go down and make our way into the congregation, okay? Dear God, thank you so much for providing us with all kinds of things. Food and families. Toys and treasures love and kindness. Help us to do the same as you do. Amen. Good job, everyone. Good job.
share um, our scripture with you this morning, and it comes from the Gospel of Mark. Um, it comes from the sixth chapter, verses 30 through 34, and then 53 through 56. So we jump just a little bit, and the story of the fish um, and the loaves, or the cantaloupe and the peaches, or the cucumbers and whatever else they were serving at this gathering, um, isn't included in this story, but it all is a part of a, uh, a dissertation, if you read through this. We've chosen this for today. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught, and he said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. So they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them, and they saw where they were going, and they recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched were healed. Here ends our reading today from this holy gospel. Thanks and praise be to God. I want to take some time to focus on that scripture by, by sharing a, a few stories. Uh, and the first story um, comes from a pastor by the name of Fred Craddock, a uh, kind of a famous preacher, a person that had served churches uh, for many, many years, a uh, great teacher, um, kind of an inspiration for me as well. He talks about coming to a church on one Sunday morning and being surprised at the pastor. This was a church he hadn't been to before. The pastor was about 6'4", 320 pounds, he was kind of stumbling about, didn't walk the best, had a lumbering gait, was a little awkward in the manner in which he presented himself. His hair was kind of messed up. He stumbled a little bit because his leg didn't work properly uh, to get up the steps of a pulpit to, to preach on Sunday mornings. And he had really, really thick glasses and when he read from something, he had to hold what he was reading rather close to his face so he could see it. And he read that Sunday, Fred said, from 1 Corinthians 13, and he spoke of the greatness of love. He wasn't very poetic. He wasn't very prophetic. But he was warm. And he was affectionate. The relationship between those people and the love that came back from the people who were gathered there was noticeable and could be felt. And so Fred thought, how could such a person, how could he, this person, um, have captured the audience and the congregation like he did? After the service, he says he lingered around the door and listen to the greetings and the words of pastoral care and comfort that were being shared by the pastor to the members of the church as they left. And one woman, uh, he said, that I guess to be about 70 years old, shook his hand at the door and said, I wish I could have known your mother. And he looked at her and shook her hand. And since he was as tall as he was, leaned down and said, my mother's name is Grace. And a few minutes later, Mr. Craddock had a chance uh, to greet him. And he said, 
Thank you today for your words. Thank you today for the worship service. And I heard the response that you gave to the woman just a moment ago. That was a, a bit of an unusual response. My mother's name is Grace, and the pastor explained this way. When I was born, I was put up for adoption at the Department of Family Services. And you can guess, nobody wanted to adopt me, so I went from foster home to foster home to foster home and to foster home. And when I was about 17, I saw some young people going into the church, and I decided I wanted some friends in my life, and so I thought I would try the church. So I went in, and it's there that I met Grace. And I've considered that to be my mother for the remainder of my life, the grace of God. That miraculous story reminds us about a person in our story today that every gospel writer shares in your Bibles. Every gospel writer chose to include this story. In his commentary on the text, Ron Allen calls this story a model and an assurance. Jesus has an idea of what the kingdom of God will be like. And stories like this one show us what some of the characteristics of the kingdom are. Jesus demonstrates that things need to be done to enact the realm of God. And so how does that happen? It happens in some incredible and wonderful ways. It happened this week. I'm sure it did. I'm sure it did for many of you. And many of you created those opportunities as well. There were a few people, for example, that did something simple yesterday. Gathered up here at the church. Came up and did a little cleaning. Went through some stuff, got rid of some things that have been in closets for about 66 years, I think. Uh, I was a part of cleaning out a closet over here. And um, way back in the closet were fans from Alexander Funeral Home that people mentioned. I remembered using those when we were kids <laughs> way back up under, just tucked away in case we might need them someday, right? Well, if you need one, they're in the dumpster. Uh, grab one on your way out. Some people gathered, took time out of their days yesterday to come up and seal picnic tables and work down at the ball diamond to keep things in order. The grace of God comes to us in some incredible ways. Yesterday evening I had the chance uh, to be at the Princeton Fairgrounds and an organization that I participate in with a great friend of mine, Andy Hape, uh, the National Football Foundation granted scholarships to 12 athletes in the area um, as they work to continue whatever they decide to do once they are out of high school. There was an auction, of course, to raise money afterwards and all of those things. But to hear about some of the amazing things that some of these boys, and they were boys because it's a football thing, have done were incredible. Their grade point averages, the National uh, Honor Society, the groups that they were involved with in schools, but here's the cool thing about the National Football Foundation. Ladies, you can be a part of a football program in whatever way you want to be. You can even play football if you want to. You can kick the ball. You can try to play if you want to play. But you can also qualify for a scholarship at the National Football Foundation if you're a trainer, if you're running cameras, if you're doing some water, if you're helping with equipment. You're involved with a football program. And those scholarships can be given as well. I received a text message just a few moments ago from Mr. Bob Yunker, who mentioned that Zion Church and Russell's 4-H Club were very well represented at the 4-H Fair. I don't think Russell's here today. He's probably in therapy. He goes into a week of intensive therapy after the fair because of all, his, all of his involvement. But that's a man who for so many years has been involved with 4-H leadership development and working with kids, the difference that he makes, 
the grace of God that works through him for the well-being of others is incredible. And there's something that you've done this week too, I'm sure, that either you don't want known, doesn't need to be known, doesn't really need to be shared, but you did to make someone's life better. You did something, somewhere, somehow. I get that chance many times and in all kinds of different contexts, whether that be walking into a hospital, whether that be walking into the Princeton Event Center, whether the, the Toyota Event Center at Princeton Fairgrounds, walking into a nursing home, having people show up and put things on my desk that I have never asked for or ever wanted. But it helps me know that someone has thought about me beyond this space. Food gets provided to so many people, and people donate and say, Jeff, I have this. Nobody needs to know a darn thing about what I'm doing or how I'm doing it. Just make sure it gets to the right place. And sometimes people don't believe that those are necessarily the right things to do. Somebody, I am sure, was in that crowd with Jesus all those generations ago and thought, here he comes again. Why does he always have to be the center of attention? I suppose he's going to heal somebody today again. He's going to take this fish, he's going to take this bread, he's going to feed everybody, right? Big deal. There's Jesus. Over here we can buy our what would Jesus do bracelets, our I love Jesus t-shirts so we can all be like Jesus, right? Here's what I would suggest when you're dealing with people who are negative in your life and try to discourage you from doing what you feel God has taught you to do. Keep a positive attitude. Sounds real easy, sounds real simple. Put that up, great job, positive attitude. Great advice, Jeff, really easy to do. This week, on Monday, I might go to work and it'd be the most negative day and it kind of sets the tone for the whole week. I'm here to tell you that's not necessarily your problem, it's their problem. Try to focus on it that way. If somebody doesn't feel like you are the person that you believe yourself to be, that's their problem, not yours. Continue and keep that positive attitude and surround yourself with those positive people. If somebody doesn't believe in you, if somebody doesn't think you are the person that you have been created to be, the person that has the energy to move in the direction that you feel like you're moving, you don't need that person around you. You don't need that person there to continue to discourage. Write it down. I do this from time to time. I started it at the beginning of this year again and then stopped because I like ice cream too much. I'll write things on the mirror in my bathroom so I see it with an, er with an erasable marker. What I started at the beginning of the year was I'd get on the scale every other day and I'd check my weight and be like, I am 148 pounds again. And I would put 148 up on the mirror. And then I'd take a shower and I'd do all my stuff to get ready in the morning. And then on Wednesday, I'd get on the scale and it'd be like, all right, I'm still 148 pounds. And I've made it down to 142. So I, I know it looks different. I know I look completely different than I did six months ago. But um, it's, it's, I think it's working. I think it's working. But put things up in places where you can see them. Some of you still have, and, and I know I have mine, that star, that epiphany star, that word for the year, the word, the star, the word that found you. Whatever it is, put it in a place where you can see it. Mental reps or mental memories and reminders are incredibly important for us as we continue to move forward in a positive way. And think about what you're filling your mind with. I think this is really, really important in the culture and the world in which we live these days. Depending on the technology you use, or how much TV you watch, or what you choose to watch when you have the television on, or what you choose to look at when you're looking at your phones. What's filling your mind daily? 
What reminders are you getting constantly? Are they positive? Or are they telling you how poor everything is or how bad everything is? Like Jesus with these few fish and a little bit of bread and all the people that want him to to heal him saying, you can't do this. You can't accomplish that. You, you're the Jesus, the, the, the little kid that's the son of Joseph, the carpenter, who lived in the shack on that area of town? You're that person? Yeah, I am. You want some fish? <laughs> yeah, I am. You want some bread? Because there's going to be enough for you, and there's going to be enough for everybody else that's gathered here today. Keep yourselves focused in a direction that moves in a manner that keeps hope alive. How we do that and how we choose to do that are going to make an incredible difference in five years and in ten years and in fifteen years, as I said last week, when all of these young children who gather with us here on Sunday morning are sitting in seats of leadership or are standing here in places like this and leading congregations and leading us, how we cast a future for them will make an incredible difference for how our church will look in 2034 and in 2037 and in 2040. May God's grace continue to be the guide, not only for us today, but for us always. Would you please join with me in prayer? Dear gracious God, we ask today that you grant us the ability to come from a place of gratitude as we continue to heal ourselves and think about what we can do to take part in the self-healing of our world. May we continue to nurture our own inner peace so we're able to extend that same healing and that same compassion to others everywhere. We offer this prayer today in Jesus' name when together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you please join with me in our closing hymn. <laughs>
thank you all so much uh, for being here today for worship. A few reminders, remember uh, some otters tickets, there's vegetables out here. And for those of you that joined us on Tuesday for fitness class, I need to be out of town on Tuesday so there's no get together on Tuesday morning. And for those of you that are thankful for that, can I get an amen? Amen, amen, amen. amen. And may God's presence be with all of us today and may God's grace take us and lead us into the places that God needs us to be. Our worship here this morning at Zion Lippe United Church of Christ has ended. Let our service now begin. Amen. Amen. 